Okay, welcome everybody. So it's time, so we should start. So first of all, thank you very much for coming to this talk, basically Micronaut Dragon Slayer of Spring Boot or just another framework. Thank you very much for choosing this talk. I know there's a lot of talks happening at this exactly same time, a lot of great talks, a lot of great speakers, so thank you for choosing this one. First of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vladimir Dianovich. This is my Twitter, my mail, my blog, my GitHub account if you want to you know, contact me online or follow me and such. I'm part of professional IT since, since 2006 and I worked in all kinds of projects and basically technologies over the years. My day job is senior director of B2C technology at PVH. PVH is a fashion tech company behind the brands such as Tommy Hilfiger and Kevin Klein. My night job is founder and leader of Amsterdam Java user group. And beside this, I'm giving talk at conferences, you know, like this one. Also, I'm Java One Rock Star and Code One Star. But enough about me. So what this talk is going to be about? First, we're going to talk about motivation for this talk, like why even like, you know, I had the idea to even like give a talk like this. Then we're going to actually compare the Micronaut and the Spring Boot, and we're going to use like, you know, like sample examples, so to say, we actually like, create like a small challenge, and I'm going to solve the challenge in both Spring Boot and Micronaut, and then we can compare you know, how good they are. At the end, there will be some time for questions, so if you have any questions, please wait until the end. Before we start, I need to you know, to say a few disclaimers. First disclaimer is, I love Spring and I love Spring Boot, and I'm a heavy user of both. So if you came to this talk expecting, like, you know, the rent talk, uh, you know, against the Spring and Spring Boot, sorry to disappoint you. Besides this, also, I want, I want to mention is that I'm not involved in developing the Spring or Spring Boot or anything, like, of their ec ecosystem. So, like, I'm not a contributor in any way. I'm just a user. The similar thing also thing is also from the Micronaut. So like I'm not involved in the development of Micronaut or anything around the ecosystem for, of a Micronaut. Again, the same thing. I'm just a user, and hopefully the fact that I'm not I don't have stake in any of these two frameworks should you know, I should be like you know independent so to say. The last uh, disclaimer is that basically all the things that I'm going to share with you come from my own personal experience. So ju don't just you know believe me like without any any questions. Like always you know like check, you know, because, you know, your use case might be different than mine. So, again, like, maybe your use, user experience will look different than mine. So, what's the motivation for this talk? Like, why even, like, you know, why should we even bother with background and Spring Boot and comparison? Well, it comes from a very simple thing, and that is, today, if we want to build anything, basically any, like, Java application or API or anything like that, we have a choice to make. So we can go library toolkit approach, or we can go basically, you know, the framework approach. And if we want to go with the libraries and toolkits approach, of course there is a vertex toolkit for great, you know, toolkit for building reactive applications, or basically there's a red pack, the set of libraries for building HTTP applications on basically on JVM stack. Both great options. If, on the other hand, we want to go on the framework approach, well, there's of course Jar Jakarta EE, formerly JEE. Then I think everybody basically knows Spring, right? Hopefully. Again, it's like Spring is a big part of our frameworks in the Java ecosystem. And from recently, we also have a Micronaut. But what's the big difference between these two approaches? Well, if we go with the libraries and toolkits approach, basically everything is open to us. We can basically customize every single thing exactly as we want it, the best to suit our own needs. But it also means that we need to basically think about a lot of things. We need to basically make sure that bits and pieces that we actually take together and assemble an application will work good in a good way. With the framework approach, basically somebody already did the hard work for us. So we don't have to like worry about all the small bits and pieces. But the problem with the framework is that it's more, basically it's constraining us more. Because again, somebody had a vision, okay, this is the way how you should do the things. Basically we're going to build all the boilerplate code around it and everything that you basically need. And as long as you stay in that path, with the framework, you're in the perfect place. If you want to go outside of that path, then it's become more like to be tricky. So what actually people do when they face this challenge? And we all face this challenge every single day when we need to build some new application, right? Well, majority of people go with the framework approach. The reason for that is very simple. Like you can, from developer point of view, you can very easily and fastly actually assemble some code, basically put it in production, and basically you know, have everything running. It's much easier and faster from developer point of view because we, we don't have to worry about every single 
you know, smaller piece of it. Of course, when we talk about the frameworks, the most popular framework is, of course, Spring and Spring Boot. So the majority of people actually want to take it, are using Spring and Spring Boot. And that shouldn't come as a surprise again, because the Spring and the Spring Boot is a very powerful dragon and a magical beast. It does a lot of crazy stuff for us. It does a lot of magic for us. Whatever you can think of, basically, to do, there is something in the Spring ecosystem that actually can help you do that without any problems. You just, you know, add one dependency and your, all your problems are solved. So it does a lot of magical stuff for us. It gives us a lot of power, a lot, a lot of basically good, nice tools. Also, the user base is very huge. So it means that, you know, if you encounter any kind of problem, there's a good chance that somebody also encountered that problem and that maybe they know how to solve it. Or basically there's a blog post or something like that on the internet. But all of this magic doesn't come for free. So there's prices that we need to pay when we use Spring and Spring Boot. So the first price that we need to pay is, of course, memory. And we need to pay with the memory because if you think about how do, the way the Spring and Spring Boot works, they do a lot of reflections and basically, you know, in the runtime, basically they create all kinds of proxies and all this kind of stuff. And like all those objects actually need to live somewhere. So they're going to take a lot of memory. Another thing that we need to pay also in the price is the CPU. Because again, you need to do basically reflections, you need to basically do injections, you do a lot, basically Spring does a lot of stuff for us in runtime. And again, when you do something in runtime, that means we're spending CPU cycles, right? Again, it, this shouldn't also come as a price that we need to pay price in a startup, because when actually Spring application startups, it needs to do, scan all your code, basically find all dependencies, injections, basically prepare, you know, connect all the bits and pieces and basically make, make application which can work, right? So it takes time. Last but not the least is basically Graal VM. So as far as I know, at the moment, Spring doesn't work with Graal VM. And again, this becoming, is becoming more and more important because also you lot, so probably saw a lot of talks with the frameworks which actually work with Graal VM and also saw the talks about Graal VM itself. And you know, it, it's a very cool and good thing to use. So you know, this is you know, a price that unfortunately at the moment with Spring we, can't, we just can't use. Okay, so is there a solution, right? Is there a solution? Is there something that can give us all the productivity and nice features that basically Spring does, but without any prices to pay? Well, according to the Micronaut team, there is. They say it's a Micronaut. So to be honest with you, I saw a lot of nice demos about the Micronaut, and I was really like amazed. However, all those talks were done by people who are heavily invested in the Micronaut framework. So of course, they are going to show us all the nice and funny stuff, right? Nobody's going to show you the crappy demo, right? So that's the reason why I say, okay, I want to basically see for myself how they compare. So if I'm a developer and I want to build something, how one to another will compare? And again, like I said, I don't have a stake in any of them, so it should be independent. So I say I want to have a small challenge, and the challenge consists of this. I want to be able to build the REST API. That's the first thing. The second thing is I want to have a database, right? So I want to connect to some database, because again, if we don't have a database, then what kind of application we are building? Then, I want to have option to basically organize my code in services. So I don't have to, it doesn't have to be called service, but just to allow me that functionality, because then it allows me to actually organize my code in a nicer way. Also, I want to have some kind of way to basically serve the static contact and dynamic you know, front end, because again, like maybe I want to build like the full application in Java. Why not? And last but not the least, I also need security. So you know, if there are security people here, like I know security shouldn't be last, but Again, we need it. So the good thing is the code for Spring Boot is already online. So this is the URL. So let's look at the code. So if we want to actually solve this problem, what would we do is actually, you know, we would go to start.spring.io, right? And then basically here, OK, cool, this takes some time. And then here we would just add the dependency that we want. So basically we would add, OK, no, not this one. Where are the dependencies? Oh, yeah. So we'd here basically we would add web. So we would then add basically DB2, no, H2, H2. We would add the JPI, we would add security, we would add time leaf, we would add Lombok because we were lazy people. And basically with this, then we would download the code and then we would start coding. So I don't have a lot of time, so I'll just show you the already done demo for Spring Boot. So this is how your application would look like. So in this case, we're building a simple bookstore application. So we have a project book, basically it doesn't have nothing fancy. I have a data from Lombok to generate all the getters and setters because I'm lazy. Of course, I have, I have an entity. 
I have a book entity which has an ID and a title, that's it. Then I have a repository to connect to my H2 database instance. Again, in this case, as you see, Spring did all work for me. So I just add annotation repository, say book repository, extends JPI repository for our entity book, type ID long, that's it. Then we have a service. In a service, basically, again, we have just annotation service. We inject book repository. We basically have like all, get all books, save a book, that's it. On a web, basically, we have a controller, which is simple REST controller. Again, Spring did all work for us, so we just add one annotation, REST controller. We inject basically one resource, service. We, on, on slash books, we get all books. Then on slash admin slash book, we will insert the book. So we just pass the parameter title. So I know, yeah, I'm using get to put the date in the database. Don't do this. This is just for demo purposes because it's easier for me to show. So don't do this in production. Of course, we have a template. So this is just a simple login page just to show, okay, we have some dynamic content. It's done in time leaf. Uh, we have basically then a simple configuration, which is just going to basically connect slash login with my basically template so that I can actually connect those two things. We have a simple web security configuration, so it's just configuration, enable web security. Again, Spring did almost every work, all the work for me. So the only thing that I need to do is add a few annotations, extend web security configure adapter, then basically here I say, okay, slash books, permit to everybody. In case of slash admin something, I want to be authenticated. And that's it. So let's build this code and see how it goes. Hopefully it works, right? Who thinks it's going to work? Wow. That low? Come on, this code was already prepared. Like, if this doesn't work, then I'm, like, really screwed. <laughs> okay, so one thing that I want to show you is we needed 10 seconds to, like, 10 and some seconds to actually compile the code. Let's now run the code. And let's see how much time, actually try to remember these numbers. So it's compiling time, 10 seconds. Let's see the startup time. Oh, this is going to be fun now because there's going to be some more password here that I need to remember. Okay, so 16 seconds for Start, and the password is, okay, this is the password. So Spring Boot also generated the password for me. Okay, cool. So startup time, more than 60 seconds. So if we go here to the localhost, 8080, and we slash books, we get nothing, of course, because there's nothing there. So let's add something with our beautiful get. Again, don't do this in production, please. So let's add. This book, for example, is going to say, okay, like, you need to authenticate. We say user, the password that basically we remembered. We sign in. Okay, so we now actually added one book. Let's add another book. So we have now, we added two books. Let's just check if everything works. Cool. So it all works, right? It all works as we expected. Perfect. So Spring Boot done. Let's see actually how we do now with the micronaut, right? So again, the good thing is the whole code is also already online, so you can check it. But we are now actually going to do live coding. So the first thing that you actually need to understand when we talk about the micronaut is that there is no start.spring.io. So that doesn't exist. What basically exists is as the key man. And basically, first you need to install as the key man. Once you install this, then you can say it's basically this as the key list, and basically see all the things that you know are present there. And there is also micronaut. So basically, to install micronaut, you just say as the key install micronaut, right? So this is the command. If you already have um, installed micronaut like I have, you can just check which version you have with as the key list. And say as the key list micronaut. And as you can see, basically I have two installs, but I'm using at the moment 1.414. So 
with this, what we actually have get, get basically is like client command tool, which is MN. And basically here, you have some commands, of course, that you can actually run. So one thing that's very interesting here is you have like different profiles, all those kind of things. So if you say, okay, list profiles, so we see a list profiles, we get different kind of profiles. And one which are, we are interested in the moment is service. So if we say profile info and we say service, basically here then you ca get the long list of all the things which are already there like done for you. So basically here, here you have like, you know, like MongoDB, you have like uh, Neo4j, you have Netflix stuff, you have Redis stuff, you have security, you have all summer ab above is Hibernate. Yeah, where is Hibernate? Yeah, Hibernate JPI. So this is all the things, dependencies that, you know, in the spring dot, start of spring.io, we would actually add for the web. Basically, this is all the things that we can add here for the micronaut. And again, this is the version of my machine, which is outdated. It's constantly being updated with new stuff. So now in order to create the application, what we need to do is basically we just do this, MN, create app, and then we add the name, let's say book micronaut, right? That's, that's what we, is going to be our name. Hopefully I don't have a directory like that. If you run this, by default, it will create the project, sample empty project with a gradle. But because I prefer Maven, I just say build Maven. Then we can add features. And we can say hibernate, GPI, security. Hopefully I didn't do any typos. And we just run this. Okay, the director already is X, that's not good. So let's just delete it. Let's run it again. It's going to create an empty project. Like I said, hopefully I didn't do any typos. Because if I did typos, we're in, in a big world of problems. Okay. So let's then now go to bookstore micronaut. Okay, let's be prepared there. Let's now open the code. And let's see actually what we have for free. So what's going to be generated for us out of the box? Okay, so let's see what we actually have here. Okay, this is strange. How we have target? Target shouldn't be there, right? Okay, so first thing first, we also get some tests for free, but I'm just going to delete them because we don't know that we don't need them anymore at the moment. And again, like who needs tests, right? So again, POM is already generated with all the dependencies. We don't have to look at it now. What's important for us is basically here, you see we get log back already set up by default for us. We have application with all the things set up already for us. So it's like H2 database, all kind of things. There's also security, and at the moment, I'm going to comment security. Then, basically, here we have some package, so let's rename that package. Okay, so we renamed the package. Okay, so now this is done. Now we don't need this directory anymore, so we can delete it, right? Enable auto import, of course. So if you open this, this is basically a very simple just application, and that's like one Java class, and it looks very similar to Spring Boot, right? It's just a starter. Oh yeah, I actually realized that now I made a mistake. Uh, so what we need to do, let me actually, first of all, let me just copy the code from the from the book, because I need actually you know, to add the, the purges. I don't want to write all of this code again. So let me just copy paste this one. Okay, so first let's create a Pojo because we need right Pojos. So we need to create a package. Pojo. New class, Java class, book. Okay, I don't care about this one. So the first thing that you will notice is that uh, here in this case I will not have basically the Lombok. The reason why I will not have Lombok is because Lombok actually generates getters and setters on a runtime. 
and the micronaut also gets all its magic in a runtime. So basically, that's why how they can provide you with all the beautiful things that Springs give us, but without the overhead, because the Spring provides us with magic in in, in a runtime, while the micronaut actually uh, my my bad in compile time. So the micronaut will do it in compile time, also like a Lombok. So if you, you can actually make work Lombok and the and the micronaut both at the same time, and basically to do their magic in the compile time, but it's, it's kind of hassle, so I don't want to deal with that at the moment. So I'll just generate two getters and setters. It's like it's not that big of a deal, right? So the next thing is we need to add repository, of course. So let's add package repository. Repository, if I know how to type. Then we can add a new package called book repository, new class book repository. So in this case, we will not have annotation at repository. We will have um, annotation singleton. And in this case, basically, again, I hopefully everybody knows what singleton is, right? So then we need persistent context, yes. Entity context, no, entity manager, entity manager, yes. Private, what is the final? Application, application configuration, application configuration. Let's also make this private. So now what we need to actually do is inject this stuff here. Okay, I need also to add semicolon or it doesn't, doesn't work. So there are multiple ways how, how you can inject stuff in a micronaut. The way that I'm going to do it here is through the constructor. So I'm going to say just book repository, current session, current session, entity manager, entity manager, application configuration, application configuration, and there's this entity manager is Entity manager, this application configuration is application configuration, and that's it. So basically, this is one way how you can inject stuff in a micronaut. So now we need to add basically get all, right? So it's going to be a list of list of book get all. So let's import the dependencies. Yes, this is the book. Of course, you don't know what the list is. So we will add transactional from the micronaut. That's a very important thing because it's going to be read only. We're going to say read only equal true. So what here we're going to do is create a st basically query string SQL query is select o o from book as o. Then we're going to say entity manager entity manager create query SQL query book.class, we of course we need to create this as a variable, variable, query is equal, yes, create local variable, yes, thank you, and now we just say return, query, get result list, yes, and that's it. So basically this is how we actually going to read the data. Now we also need to save the data. So let's we say with transactional, public, we are going to return a book, save, string, Title, and we're going to say here, book, book is new book, right? Book set title is title. Then we say, okay, let me, entity manager persist book, and we return book. And that's it. Repository done. Now let's add service. So again, new package, service. So again, we add book service. book service. And again, the same thing. We don't have annotation service. We just add annotation singleton. Again, we need to basically inject book repository, right? Book repository. Again, we're going to inject it through the constructor. Book service, book, repos book repository, book repository. Okay. And then we're going to say here, this dot book repository is book repository. Done. Injection done. So what we need to provide is, again, two methods. Basically, one is for going to return the list of books. Let's call it find all. It's going to be book uh, return book repository. I called it get all, right? Yeah, I called it get all. Let's import the list because otherwise it's going to complain. And also we're going to say one more where we actually add the book for a string title. And then we just say return book repository, save title, and that's it. 
Again, service also done. The last but not the least, we also need to add you know, the controller, right? So we can say you new know, package, controller, controller. So we are going to create new Java class, book controller. And OK, cancel. So we, well, in this case, we have annotation controller. So we are going to use annotation controller. Again, we need to inject service, so it's private. Book service, book service. OK, we inject. So again, through the constructor, book controller, book service, book service. This is the book service is book service, right? So this one is injected. Cool, that's done. Now we need basically to create two endpoints. One is slash books for class, yes. And this is going to return public list, list come out of book, get all books. So if we just import the book now, we see, okay, and also list. Why not? So now we're going to say return book dot service book service yes find all that's it. We need to add one more. Get it's going to be slash admin slash book public book add book or however. String. Then we have basically. Come on, we need to add query very value, yes, it's going to be called title, title, and then we say here string, title, and we're just going to say return, book service, add book, title. That's it. So let's just do quick now, let's see if it actually works, just, you know, sanity check. So if we compile the code, so this is still not full solution, right, we're still missing basically uh, the Front end, te templating the front end, and we also still may, uh, missing security. So if you compile code now, the one thing that I'm going to tell you out of the box is it's going to take more time than the Spring Boot. And again, because Spring Boot does the magic in a runtime, Micronaut does all the injections in compile time. So in with the Spring Boot, it was 10 seconds. Here is, as you can see, 18 seconds. But let's look now at, uh, at, our, at basically when it startups. So when we go target, book to Micronaut, so this is going to be starting much, much faster than the Spring Boot, because again, Spring Boot, during the startup, does a lot of injections and all those kind of things. Micron doesn't do it for us. So as you can see, it started in seven seconds. Again, this is still not a full solution. So let's just see if it actually works. So if you go here, basically on the same URL, localhost, books, we shouldn't get anything, because there is nothing there, yes. And if we try to add a book, at the moment it's going to pass, it should pass at least, because we don't have protection. So yeah, we added a book. If you go again, books, yeah, so there is a book. Cool. So it works. So now let's actually finish our code. So first thing first, let's add uh, the security. In order to add security, basic, well, actually, let, let's add everything. So if I want to add the, the templating engine, I need to add a few things in the dependencies. So first thing first, I need to add here dependency. Dependency, and I want to say micronaut views. Basically, that's it. Then also I need to add the templating engine, which is again temp dependency time leaf, and we're going to add version three point. Yeah, I think this is the one. Hopefully this this correct one. The next thing, what we're going to do is in resources we are going to create a directory called views, because it expects all the templates engine basically to be there. So we now we created the views. I'm not going to. To be honest with you, I'm not going to write the views now because there it's boring. So it's there's home. I'm going to put it in source, resource, main resources, views. And there is also login. No, it's it's out. Yeah, it's authentication. Uh, the more also what I'm going to actually I'm going to copy also some controllers because I want to also We'll start with that. I'm going to show you all this code. Uh, okay, controller, yes. And there's also should be one more. I think it's home, called home. Home controller, yes. So basically now we added some code. 
So let's see actually what we added. So in views, I added very simple home page written in time leaf. So again, it's like it's nothing like really magical about it. Also in authentication, also I added just one, one simple basically time leaf, basically simple login page. So I don't want to use to, to spend time on that. In controllers, basically I added the home controller to actually connect my template with basically with my view. And I also added the login controller. Again, the same thing, to just to connect basically my you know URL with, with the template engine. So now I need to go to application. I need to uncomment the security, which we actually you know, commented out. Also, I need to, come on, I also need to, okay, uncomment. Then I need to basically change this URL to login slash authentication failed. The next thing that I need to do is actually now I need to protect my book controller. So I need to basically secure this. So I'm secured it with basically security, security rule. Rule uh, is uh, anonymous because it actually should be open to anybody. And like other, basically when we add the book, here we want to basically have like authenticated. Again, security rule authenticated. Uh, this is one way how you can secure basically your application. There are multiple ways. You can also add all this you know, logic, what's protected by which roles and everything like that in the YAML file. You can also use the JSRs directly from the Java itself spec for security. Or you can basically use micro annotations. So there's like multiple ways with security. So now we protect ourselves, but we still need to basically add one more thing, and that is actually we need to provide, you know, with some way to authenticate. So let's create a new package controller and basically let's create here simple authentication provider. Authentication application provider. Okay, we want to add it. So again, we add as a singleton. Here we're going to implement, implement authentication provider. Yes, then we're going to basically implement one method. Yes. So what we're going to do here is we are going to say if, and then we say uh, authentication request, get identity, this dot equals user, and authentication request, get secret, equals password. So this is very hard to, to guess, right? We're just going to return flow, flowable, just of new user details, and we're going to provide username as a user, and new, new command. You see, it's not only array list. Of course, we need to import this. That's it. In the case we provide the wrong password, we're just going to return global just new authentication, new Oh, indication failed, yes. And this should be it. So let's now try to compile the full solution. And again, it should take more time than Spring Boot, right? Because even like, you know, like not the full solution took more time than Spring Boot. So let's see how this goes. Again, Micron does a lot of stuff for us in compile time, it checks all the dependencies, it checks all the injections and basically put them all together. So it's like took 19 seconds. So let's see if the runtime is still better. In theory, it should be. Because again, like all the injections, everything is still done. So basically, it started in seven seconds. So almost no change at all. Again, like, and if you remember, Spring Boot took like 16 seconds. So if we now tr go to slash books, there will be no books because we don't have anything in our database, right? So if now we try to actually add book, admin book, title, let's say one, one Q, four, we're not. It's going to say, okay, you need to log in. So you see this beautiful, you know, dynamic page that we have. So we say user, password, we log in. Okay, so we now logged in. So if we now try again, book, no, admin, book, title, dance, dance, dance. Basically, we added one more. One. We can also add, like, 
spin ball. Again, we also added one more book. So if we go and slash now check the books. Yeah, it all works. So, like, like you so let's look at basically some results that actually how it took on my laptop. So again, like this is my laptop, you know, my environment, you know, your use case may be different. So if we look at the build time, Spring roughly took about 10 seconds. Micronaut took roughly about 21 seconds. Okay, in this case it was 18 seconds, but doesn't matter. Again, Micronaut needs more time in compile time because it does all the scanning of your code, all injections, all dependencies, everything is done in, in compile time compared to the runtime of Spring Boot. The startup time, well, in the case of a Spring Boot, it took roughly around 15 seconds. Micronaut, around 7.1 seconds. Again, this shouldn't come as a surprise because all the magic that happens in the Spring happens in a runtime and basically the startup is a really big part where actually it actually does scanning all the code, all the dependencies, all injections and everything. In case of the Micronaut, it doesn't have to do that, so Micronaut, of course, is faster. So how it comes, basically look. So in startup time, Micronaut wins. Let's look now at the memory consumption. So roughly, again, this use case that I showed you with the Spring Boot took on my machine 190 megabytes. Again, I just started this with a simple java-jar jar file. That's it. So I didn't provide any special, you know, like, you know, flags or anything, basically, okay, use this, this amount of heap or anything. I just, like, say, okay, like, you just go and I'm not going to influence you in any single way. So Spring Boot took 190 megabytes. The same condition with the Micronaut is 80 megabytes. So I would say the Micronaut wins, right? Because it took much, much, much less memory than the Spring Boot. Okay, now let's look at CPU. How the CPU compares? Well, this is actually if you, I looked basically, I basically started my Spring Boot application. I connect, connected the visual VM and I ru run a like fake load test. And this is basically what I got in visual VM for a Spring Boot. And then I did the same thing for Micronaut. And I got this. So which one wins? Well, mm -hmm. Basically, I would say that my use case probably isn't the best thing to actually demonstrate, like, is one or the other better. But again, if I think about the ways, actually, okay, how the Spring Boot works, how the Micronaut works, I would say, you know, that its logical conclusion would be that, you know, micro, Micronaut would win. But again, on my use case, I can, you know, I can say, okay, you see, like, here is the proof. Now the big one, the Grail VM. Well, I didn't show you the demo for that uh, because, again, like I said, there is no demo for Spring Boot, as far as I know, and there is a multiple talks and demos about, you know, Micronaut and Graal VM, so I didn't want to spend time with that. But yeah, Micronaut wins because, again, it works out of the box with the Graal VM because everything, all dependencies, everything is done in compile time. It, there is no any problems. Now we come to the, actually, to the most important part, how we actually compare with the challenge. So which one is better, right? Well, I would say that both were great because with both of them, in a very short amount of time, you can actually solve the, all the problems, right? So you saw me, like, you know, coding, like, live in Micronaut, maybe, like, what, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and I did everything. You can also do similar thing in Spring Boot, maybe even smaller, but it's, so it's basically, it's very fast to do it in both of them. But I would say that Spring Boot was just tiny better. The only very, very small, tiny better. And the reason, only reason why I would say that is that from the developer point of view, if you look at Spring Boot, and if you look repository, and you look at Micronaut repository, Spring Boot repository looks much, much nicer. Which one performs better? Which one is actually better to have? That's a different discussion. But you know, from purely development point of view, in the Spring Boot, I just add one annotation why I just say, okay, implement it, basically extend this framework and the interface, and that's it. The Spring Boot does all the magic for me. In the case of a Micronaut, I had to write all this code. So that's the only reason why I would say, like, you know, it's like, you know, for her or of a dog, basically, the Spring Boot wins here. But it's very, very, very tiny. So it's almost like, you know, you can ignore it. So what's the conclusion, right? Because we started with this talk with, uh, say, let's say, basically, see, you know, like, is Micronaut really much better? Is Micronaut really, like, the killer of a Spring Boot? If you have today running application written in the Spring or the Spring Boot, should you throw it away? and write it completely rewrite it in the Micronaut. And my answer to, for you to, to that would be, 
you know, keep your current code base as it is. So don't rewrite whatever you have, and whatever you have, basically, it doesn't have to be a spring, but don't rewrite it in a micronaut just to rewrite it, unless you have a really, really good reason, you know? Because again, you know, rewriting the code doesn't always give us the benefits, and it's definitely going to cost us time and resources. So keep your current base, code base f from your project, whatever it is, now as it is, unless you have really big problems. But if you're actually starting with a new project, well, then I would say definitely consider Micronaut. You know, like, again, like, for my use case, basically, like, all the existing projects, definitely I'm, go I'm not going to rewrite in Micronaut. But if you start something new, the Micronaut is very high on my list because it gives me productivity of all the, fr basically, of uh, frameworks that we like. It's very easy and fast to actually to do stuff, and it's very performant. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it's mind-blowing. Also, the amount of basically features that already exist, it's like, it's just ridiculous. So you already have like Kafka, you already have like GraphQL, you already have messaging. Basically, you already have gRPC. Basically, like every single service discovery, like you name it, they have it. So basically, every single day, the ecosystem is like rapidly growing. The documentation is phenomenal. Basically, like, you know, like you can just go read like guides and everything and tutorials, documentation, and just, you know, you will be able to solve all your problems. So it's like extremely good thing to consider for, for new projects. Thank you. <laughs>